To discuss it all, let us bring in Anita Kumar. She's the White House correspondent for McClatchy. She joins us now from Washington. Okay, Anita, we are going to start with the president's lunch with uh, Senator McConnell this afternoon. McConnell is someone that the president has blamed for failing to repeal and replace Obamacare. Uh, McConnell said that the president had excessive expectations. The president did not take too kindly to that at all. But now we have tax reform looming and the president needs the majority leader's support. So what can we expect to come out of this meeting? Sure. I mean, it's an interesting time because of that criticism. I I've, I've saw that some people referred to it as a frosty. It's going to be a frosty lunch. But look, both sides need each other. And so they both, I think they'll put aside the differences for today and just kind of work on all these things that Congress needs to pass. The president's frustrated that, that, that they haven't gotten anything done. Mitch McConnell's frustrated that they haven't gotten anything done. So you mentioned tax reform. They're also going to talk about the budget. Uh, the White House says they'll talk about the fall agenda. So that could also include uh, immigration reform, the Iran nuclear deal that President Trump just asked them to take up. So they've got a lot of things to talk about. And the goal here, again, is just to try to figure out how they can get something passed. Anita, Senator McConnell is also facing attacks from the president, Trump's former chief strategist, Steve Bannon, who bashed the majority leader and the Republican establishment over the weekend. He uh, said some really strong words. Let's place that sound now. Now, Mitch, I, I don't know if you're watching today. I don't know if you're watching Value Voters or you maybe have your staff. But if I, can, uh, if I can take a little rift on Plutarch and Shakespeare, up on Capitol Hill, because I've been getting calls, it's like, it's like before the Ides of March, right? The only question is, and this is just an analogy or metaphor, whatever you want to call it, they're just looking to find out who's going to be Brutus to your Julius Caesar, Yeah, Mitch, the donors, the donors are not happy. They've all left you. We've cut your oxygen off, Mitch. He did not pull any punches there. Anita, how are these attacks going to impact the president's relationship with McConnell and their legislative agenda moving forward? Right. I mean, I think Senator McConnell has gotten kind of used to this rhetoric. Let's remember that President Trump and Steve Bannon remain really close, even though Steve Bannon has left the White House. The two talk frequently and, you know, and they're he's very still very influential. So, I mean, it's obviously not a good situation there. Those comments were extremely harsh. But I think Senator McConnell is aware of that. Um, he knows that Steve Bannon is out there recruiting people to run against some of the Republican senators. Uh, you know, we just saw what happened in Alabama. It was the same situation where Bannon's uh, choice won the primary. So he's getting ready for that. He realizes that. And I think he thinks that the best thing he can do is get something passed in Congress to actually get some people on his side. All right, so let's talk about something else. Uh, the president has had spent a, a ferocious hour tweeting, I think. Uh, there was like six or seven tweets back to back. They ran the spectrum, but he finished off with a tweet about crooked Hillary. Uh, and he said, I was recently asked if crooked Hillary Clinton was going to run in 2020. My answer was, I hope so. What is that about? What do you make of it? Well, we don't actually know exactly what he was looking at or heard about. I had someone tell me last week that oftentimes we think he's watching television. It's actually someone who's come into his room or the Oval Office and mentioned something, and then it, it kind of sets him off. But obviously Hillary Clinton is on a book tour, and so she's been talking a lot about President Trump and the election. She uh, just talked on Sunday uh, for uh, at length about how she does not think he should be tweeting about North Korea, and she's afraid that he's going to get us into a into a war. So obviously that's getting under his skin. And as we know, the president likes to respond when when something is bothering him. So, you know, he has not in the last nine or 10 months let the election go. He talks about it frequently. And so this is just his latest, latest time that he's doing that. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing he talked about the stock market, there were all, all sorts of other tweets, but he also tweeted about Chuck Schumer and uh, Chuck Sh basically calling Chuck Schumer a flip flopper, saying that he was opposed to the Iran deal when President uh, Obama was uh, the president. And now he seems to be opposed to President Trump's opposition to the deal. Let's put it that way. A lot of opposing in there. But wh what's that about, do you think? Why do you think he tweeted about that today? Yeah, it's interesting because the last week or so, the White House has really pushed back on Senator Schumer on a couple things, including what you just mentioned and also immigration. They're saying he flip-flopped on that. You know, it's so interesting because President Trump, this is the guy President Trump struck a deal with, a couple deals with, just a few weeks ago. But that's how this president is. He'll, he'll get along with you one day 
and strike a deal, and then two weeks later, there he is criticizing you on Twitter. So mm -hmm. he doesn't ever seem to be looking down the road to say, here's the guy I need for later to make a deal. But I think Senator Schumer, it's the same situation. You know, if there's a, if there's a time that he can make a deal with President Trump, he's going to do that. Right, right. I remember during the last cabinet meeting, uh, it was Schumer that made fun of the president's cabinet meeting. He put together, do you remember that? He put together a yeah. little skit of how, how productive his own meeting was, sort of making fun of how all the cabinet members were praising the president right. profusely. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, what interesting timing, because he's having his second cabinet right. meeting today. Yeah. Anita Kumar, thanks a lot. Thank you.